On August 2016, I had a Twitter message waiting for me, asking me if I was interested in doing bobsleigh with aspirations of going to the Winter Olympics. I had just finished competing in my second Olympics in the 100 meter hurdles. I was ranked in the top eight in the world. And you're asking me to leave my perpetual tan and my booty shorts for winter coat boots and to hurl myself down an icy chute. Yeah, I don't think so. I replied politely, I'll think about it. But I wasn't really going to think about it because it would just be crazy for me to pick up a new sport after doing track and field for the past 14 years. And I'm a summer Olympian. What's the chances of me going to the Winter Olympics? Track and field is my bread and butter. I'm good at it. I know I'm good at it. So it'd be crazy for me to step away from it. Right? But for some reason, I couldn't get this crazy idea out of my head. For some reason, I felt like I was standing at the edge of a cliff. Questions swirling in my head. Should I do this? Does it make sense to uproot myself? Will I be good enough? And I heard another voice say, Jump. You see, most of us, we live in this neatly manicured place. It's called comfort and routine, and, and it's an awesome place because you know what to expect and you know what's going to happen. And just outside those gates, there's this other place. It's full of discomfort, uncertainty, and fear. And most of us, we avoid that place like the plague because, I mean, who wants to wake up at 5 a.m. and leave your warm bed? And some of us, I mean, we're just waiting for that perfect moment. You know, when the stars align and when God himself descends from the heavens and tells us, yep, that's a good move to make. <laughs> but let me tell you guys a little secret about this place that's full of discomfort, uncertainty, and fear. It's also full of possibilities, growth, and change. The magic happens when you embrace the uncertainty. I mean, fully accept it and start to see the possibilities that it can offer you. So being the totally sane person that I am, I decided to do bobsled. I packed up all my stuff, put it in storage, and I booked a one-way ticket to Calgary. My first day going down a bobsled track, I couldn't eat breakfast. Butterflies would be an understatement, I'd say closer to bald eagles. You see, you have to be a special kind of crazy to stand at the top of an icy hill, knowing at times you're going to be traveling at 150 kilometers per hour in basically a souped up bathtub, <laughs> with no, and at times feeling five Gs of forces pressing down on your body. So as I stood at the starting block, <laughs> on the brink of having a mini heart attack, the bobsled in front of me, trying to muster every ounce of courage that I had to not simply walk away, I told myself, 50 seconds. 50 seconds of your entire life. Wouldn't you regret it if you didn't give yourself just 50 seconds? The hardest part about overcoming a fear is overcoming the inertia to start an action. You see, you have to force yourself because you're not going to feel like it. Fear is defined as the unpleasant feeling that someone or something is going to cause harm, is dangerous, or is a threat. And whether that threat is real, like going down a bobsled track, or not, the feeling is real. The way your body responds is real. Courage on the other hand, is the ability to undertake an overwhelming difficulty or pain despite the fear. But in times of uncertainty, we're often crippled by the fear, fear of the unknown. And we'd rather just sit and wait till things feel comfortable. But it's in these moments that it's the most important to, to know your why something bigger than yourself, 
bigger than your fear that's worth fighting for. Showing up, it's not about being fearless. It's about acknowledging the presence of fear and making the deliberate choice to fight. It's having the courage to leave what's comfortable for what's challenging. And sometimes, it's just asking yourself for 50 seconds of insane bravery because there's confidence in conquering. And every time that we face our fears, we're showing ourselves our superpowers. So that first time going down was one of the scariest and most exhilarating things that I've ever done in my life. But it was just a stepping stone on my journey. Bobsled push athletes are constantly being evaluated. With only three Canadian women's sleds, that's three spots. Three spots to go make the Winter Olympics. So it was a constant fight for your position. Every time that we were behind a sled, it was a chance to show what we have or don't have. Those first few months, I felt myself unravel. Overthinking would be an understatement. I would only have two runs per day, two runs to learn a new sport, two runs to pick up the nuances of what it means to, pay, to be a great push athlete. Every day felt like do or die. I started comparing myself to the other girls. They had been pushing for years, but all I saw was that I wasn't measuring up. And I didn't think it was possible, but I started getting worse. I was tired, I was stressed, and I was worried. The first World Cup race, I wasn't racing. I was a spare. My job on race day, you ask? Unload and flip the sleds, help bring the sleds to the start line, collect my racing teammates' clothing as they got ready to race. From Canada's number one hurdler to a rookie bobsled spear. The World Cup after that, spear. Oh, 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 after that, spear. And the next one, spear. Hmm. I questioned myself. I asked myself, why am I out here? Why am I doing this? I wanted to quit. I was ready to quit. I had all but decided to pack myself up, get ready for my track indoor season. But then I reminded myself of this little space, a little door that was open just, just slightly in the distance. While there was a chance that I would spend my winter getting my racing teammates' clothing thrown at me, there was also the chance that I'd be the one standing at the line. More importantly, that I'd be the one standing at the line at the Olympics. You see, most of us, we don't give ourselves a chance, not a real chance. We get so caught up in looking at what other people are doing that we get blinded to the possibilities in front of us. That day, I reminded myself that I didn't have time to baby an ego. The beginning is going to be ugly and frustrating. It is going to be a process with no guarantee of the outcome. I decided to focus on myself, and only myself, to focus on the things that I could control. I know I couldn't control the outcome, but I could control my actions. Every day and every night, as I lay in bed, I would visualize myself pushing, seeing and feeling all the things that I wanted to do. I had to find another way to practice. I started taking my place, myself to places in the weight room that I had never been before, adding weight incrementally until I was the strongest and most powerful that I've ever been in my life. I stopped looking at the times that I was pushing in practice, but more importantly, I stopped looking at the times that the other girls were pushing in practice. Comparison can be the thief of potential, and I decided to define success on my own terms. The progress that I saw was exponential. Slowly working my way up to the number one push athlete on the team. And you can imagine my excitement when my name was called for the last four World Cups to compete. And on January 24th, 
2018, just five months after my first time pushing a bobsled, I was named to the Canadian Winter Olympic team. In Pyeongchang at the Olympic Games, I had a soundtrack playing in my head, a little voice that rears its head anytime I leave my place of comfort and routine. I like to call her Shirley. I'm sure you all have your own personal Shirley. She told me I needed to be perfect. She begged me not to put myself out there. She said I could fail, I could mess up. And we all know that's the end of the world. But I don't blame Shirley. Our brains have evolved to keep us safe, to process the information in front of it. But in times of uncertainty, it just has to make its best educated guess. Like a grandmother that wants the best for you, but is just a little bit out of touch. <laughs> and quite often, that voice isn't even our own. So influenced by the world around us and what we're told to believe. So I've learned that while Shirley may mean well, she's also a pathological liar. So on day two, run four at the Olympic Games, as I stood on the starting block, feeling the cold wind staring through my speed suit, my helmet securely tightened, staring at the icy chute in front of me, I asked Shirley to take a back seat. Along with a million ways that I could mess up, with all my past failures and my desire to excel so that I could embrace the moment, so that I could fully embrace the uncertainty of the moment. Because I know that you can't take advantage of life if you aren't present, radically present. There is something superhuman about bringing your energy, all of your energy to a moment. I'm talking a mom taking a car off her toddler kind of superhuman. Some call it the subtle art of not giving a care. Not giving a care about all the things that we let bog us down. Because in those moments, you aren't anxious about the past or worried about the future. Just fully in the moment, experiencing, being. So when the all clear light lit up, nothing else existed in the world. Just me, my partner, the sled, and the ice beneath us. And when we crossed the finish line and I realized we won a bronze medal, I felt tears well in the corner of my eye, raw, unfiltered emotion, and I cried. Because I remembered the woman that showed up in Calgary six months ago. I remember spending hours just trying to get it right. I remember doubting myself and being sure that I just wouldn't be able to get it done. I remember deciding to take a leap of faith on this crazy idea and feeling like I've been falling ever since. And here I was, safely caught in my net. Here's the thing. I can't promise you if you take that risk, face your fears, take that leap of faith, that you'll get that big thing that you want at the end. But that's not the point. So what's the point then, Felicia? Why bother? What I can promise you is that you will be transformed through the process. You will become a different human being on the other side. Some people might look at my medal and think it represents my athletic ability. But to me, it represents my choice to show up, my willingness to fail horribly, my choice to see possibility, and my choice to fight for the things that I want. And I'm immensely proud of myself for those things, with or without a medal. Embracing uncertainty is about being in a place of becoming. Allowing a space for a possibility that our limited minds can't even fathom yet. 
So I ask you, when was the last time you did something for the first time? When was the last time you stepped completely out of your comfort zone? Because I know your box of comfort and routine feels safe. But there is danger in staying there. Danger in limiting your true complexity. So the next time that you have to define yourself, what if you left a little bit of space for more? A little bit of space for a possibility that you can't even see yet. The next time that you're at the edge of uncertainty, what if you decided to jump? Thank you.